In 1977, the great power's attention shifted to the Horn of Africa. As regimes changed, so did alliances. The Soviet Union and the United States switched sides easily. In Ethiopia, the emperor had been ousted and replaced by Marxists. Moscow had a new ally, Colonel Mengistu Haile Mariam. When the Soviets uh, moved into Ethiopia uh, to assist uh, the communist dictator there, Haile Mariam Mengistu, I thought that this was a threat to the stability of Africa. The Soviets at that time were proclaiming over and over again that the scales of history were tipping in the favor of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union would outstrip us in economic performance. The Soviet Union was getting a strategic edge. The Soviet Union was riding the crest of the so-called national liberation struggles. The new regime in Ethiopia turned against America. Just to uh, uh, expelled most of the Americans from Ethiopia in the following months, uh, arrogantly um, terminated the American aid program. Neighboring Somalia had been a Soviet ally for years. Somalia's army was equipped with Soviet weapons. But now that Moscow was also linked with Ethiopia, the Somalis considered turning to Washington. Uh, they had very little chance of getting American uh, full support. But they knew uh, that if uh, they tried to present themselves as anti-Soviet, they would improve their chances. The Somalis turned against the advice of their Soviet ally and prepared for war with Ethiopia. But President Carter turned down their appeal for American arms. I thought that, uh, that uh, Somalia should not be permitted to succeed in trying to take Ethiopian territory, and I refused to give the Somali government any weapons. Nevertheless, in July 1977, the Somalis seized large tracts of the Ogaden Desert. The Soviets tried to stop the advance through diplomacy. Gromyko suggested joint mediation with the Americans. But Brzezinski rejected that, saying it would have legitimized the Soviet presence in the Horn of Africa. Brzezinski felt that the American presence was legitimate everywhere, but the Soviet presence wasn't. Anti-Soviet demonstrations in Somalia greeted the government's decision to send the Russian advisers and their families back to Moscow. All Soviet support was now switched to Ethiopia. The Soviet Union began shipping in weapons and 15,000 troops to fight in Ethiopia. The troops were Cuban. It was the only operation we conducted in full agreement with the Soviets. No such cooperation took place even in Latin America. Quite the opposite. The Cuban troops in Ethiopia played a very important role. The Ethiopians couldn't have provided the military organization to destroy the Somali troops in such a short period of time, even with our help. 
и даже с нашей помощью не смогла бы. With Cuban troops and Soviet support, the Ethiopians drove the Somalis out of the Ogaden. But Moscow wouldn't let the troops advance into Somalia. Among the Soviet military, we thought about occupying Somalia. But the Soviet government was right not to allow this, because it would have made our relations with countries like the United States of America, Great Britain and others more difficult. Mengistu Haile Mariam basked in glory. The Cubans and Soviets had saved his regime. In Washington, some saw the victory as proof that the Soviets were abusing detente. The Horn of Africa was not important to America as of itself, but it was important as a measure and a test of how the Soviets were interpreting detente. Quarrels about the Third World were getting blown out of all proportion. These disputes about Africa, Angola, Ethiopia and Somalia. None of them were worth it. Twenty years later, no one even remembers who was doing what. In the hunt for Cold War gains, the superpowers spawned an arms race in the developing world. Their solemn promises of restraint were blown to the winds. <laughs> 